Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings this morning remind us that it is not only us who are preparing for Christmas, but it is God who will prepare us. It is God who will prepare something for us. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Come quickly, we pray, Lord Jesus, and do not delay that those who trust in your compassion may find solace and relief in your coming, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book 
of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old. Since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him, and my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Please stand. Splendor of eternal light, Son of justice, 
Come and shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Zechariah, his father, filled with the Holy Spirit, prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, for the past weeks of the Advent season, we have been repeating the lines of preparing ourselves for the coming of our Lord. It is us who will prepare Paulit-ulit po natin yung narinig, maghahanda tayo. Ihahanda natin ang ating mga sarili para sa pagdating ng Panginoon. But God reminds us today that it is not really ourselves who will prepare for the Lord. In fact, it is God who will prepare us for His coming. Hindi naman talaga tayo ang naghahanda. Ihahanda tayo ng Diyos. And many times, it is our thinking that it is us who will give something to God. But God reminds us it is not you who will give something to me. It is I who will give something to you. In our first reading today from the second book of Samuel, when David became king and he was already comfortable in his palace, maybe out of pride, he said, I will build a beautiful house for God. But God reminded him, sandali lang, baka nakakalimutan mo, hindi ikaw ang Diyos. At hindi ikaw ang magtatayo ng tahanan ko. Don't you remember, you are, you may be a king, but I am still God. It is not you who will build my house. 
it is I who will build a house for you. My dear brothers and sisters, before we get disillusioned with the celebrations of Christmas, that it is always us who will prepare something for the Lord, let us always be reminded that it is God who will prepare us. It is always God who will prepare something for us. This is the canticle of Zechariah in the gospel reading that we heard. Zechariah sang, not of his own capacities, not of what he has done for God, but he sang about what God has done for them. Mga minamahal na kapatid, sana po ngayong tayo'y naghahanda nitong Adyento na ito, huwag nating kalilimutan na buksan din natin ang ating mga sarili kung paano tayong ihahanda ng Diyos. Baka iba ang paghahanda ng Diyos para sa atin. I remember when uh, I was a newly ordained priest, I was ordained December 7. So my first pastoral ministry was the Christmas season. I was already preparing for a beautiful Christmas celebration. But you know, my first celebration of the Mass was on the streets. I was called for a funeral mass sa kalye kasi yung namatay sa kalye nakatira with his family. It was the most, I will admit, uncomfortable mass for me. Hindi kagaya dito. Ang ganda ng sound system. May magaling akong mga lectors. Mayroon akong pipe organ. Lahat nandito. It is very comfortable for me to celebrate Mass. But at that moment, during one of my first Masses, I was celebrating Mass while the jeepneys are passing through and we cannot listen to ourselves. It was the most uncomfortable Mass for me. Sa totoo lang, parang minamadali ko nga yung misa para matapos na. But after the Mass, that very poor family gave me 20 pesos. At sabi ko sa kanila, wag na ko sa inyo na po yan. They forced it so that I could receive it. Sabi niya, Father, Yan ho ang bigay namin sa inyo. You know, it was one of my most unforgettable masses. I realized that Christmas is not just about comforts. It is about accompanying people. It is not about the generosity of gifts, but the generosity of persons even the poorest of the poor. All along, I have already preconceived notions and ideas of Christmas. But God surprised me. It was Him all along who will prepare me for my first Christmas as a priest. My dear brothers and sisters, let us open our hearts to the surprise of God. And let God prepare us for His coming. Amen. Stand. Please stand. Zechariah thanked God for being faithful to His promise. Confident of God's graciousness, we now present to Him our needs. For every petition, let us say, Lord, come and bless us.
Lord, come and bless us. That we may learn to forgive one another despite our woundedness and brokenness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord come, come and, and bless, bless us. That we may learn to love even when we are betrayed or taken for granted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord come, come and bless, bless us. That we may continue to do good even when we are malign and misunderstood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord come, come and bless, bless us. That we may continue to speak the truth despite the ridicule and rejection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, come and bless us. That our departed loved ones may enter into the promise of the eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord come and bless us. Merciful and loving Lord, help us to be strong and patient in our difficulties. May we never lose hope in your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Graciously make your own, O Lord, the offerings which we bring, that partaking of them we may be cleansed of our sins and merit to stand ready with pure hearts for the coming in glory of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, 
Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant to us who find new vigor, O Lord, in these your wondrous gifts, that as we prepare to celebrate in adoration the festivities of your Son's nativity, so we may possess in gladness his everlasting rewards, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This evening, our celebrations here at the Manila Cathedral this Christmas Eve will start at 7 p.m. with a Christmas concert by the Manila Cathedral Choir. They will be singing to us Christmas carols to usher in the festivity of Christmas. And at 8 p.m., we will be celebrating the Christmas Eve Mass to be presided by our Archbishop, Jose Cardinal Advincula. On Sunday, December 25, Christmas Day, our Masses here at the Manila Cathedral will be at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning and 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the afternoon. We invite everyone to join us in the celebrations of the Holy Mass here at the Manila Cathedral. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.